Larry Magid, CBS News. Most people already know about the deep cultural links between the United States and Ireland, but there are also business ties that go way back. I had an opportunity to learn about the business ties and the way technology companies, both in the U.S. and Ireland, are working together by speaking with Pora Hayes, who heads up West Coast operations for IDA Ireland, the Irish government's development agency. So, Pora Hayes, tell me a little bit about some of the connections between our two countries. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, thanks, Larry, and great to be here again. Um, and you're right. There, there is you know, Ireland. Is uh, Ireland and the US have have links going back generations. Many people in here, you know, count Irish heritage. And um, um, but you're right. I mean, at the business relationship as well, and the business links between Ireland and the US go back over a hundred years since since uh, Henry Ford opened up his first plant uh, outside of the US in County Cork. And, um, you know, from I suppose from our perspective, we would see those links as being stronger than ever before. Um, so last year, I think we've seen more kind of investment between the US and Ireland in both directions than we ever had in the past. Uh, and that's um, that's both in terms of of Ireland continuing to to help US companies kind of grow into global markets. Um, so IDA, the organization I work for, uh, we helped um, we had over 160 companies from from the US or sorry, we had over 160 investments in Ireland by US companies. Uh, and over the past five years, there's been a, a new company from the US set up an operation in Ireland about about once a week. Um, and, and that's also then kind of, you know, in the other direction, you've got uh, you've got quite a lot of US co- or Irish companies based here, employing hundreds, about 100,000 people with operations across across 50 states. And it is interesting in Ireland. Uh, certainly, I've visited already the the offices of Google and Facebook, which are are in Dublin. Mm-hmm. But a lot of American corporations have, I believe, their their European headquarters in Ireland. Yes, yeah. There's there there are you know as a, a lot of our a lot of international companies um, have operations there. The U.S. is our largest market in terms of of a, of a source of investment. Um, so you know across the U.S. and across sectors, you've got you know you've got companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Google from this part of the world setting up operations or, or would have had operations there going back decades. Um, and what's interesting is we've seen that flow continue. So we've seen record numbers of companies investing over the past few years. Um, recently from this part of the world, from the West Coast, the likes of Edwards Life Sciences and Square and Stripe. Um, but what's also interesting, I think, is the the startup scene and, um, you know, the number of co- very, very young companies that are that are using Ireland as a base for, for Europe. And um, I think it's interesting we had, you know, th- this concept of, of Ireland as a bridge between the US and Europe is kind of it's never been as important I think than it is now and we're seeing that particularly in in technology. Well and of course with Brexit kicking in I guess sometime this year right I'm not sure exactly when they're gonna yeah. pull the plug on this but that certainly puts Ireland in a much more interesting position given the fact that uh, the the British have essentially opted out of some of the opportunities that they they had as they as part of the European mm-hmm. Union, European market. So, I'm curious how that's going to affect things. Yeah, like I, th- I think there's there's definitely uncertainty on both sides of the pond, and and from from the perspective of a let's say a company who's looking to grow globally or go globally, that that provides a lot of challenges. Uh, we actually have a new a new prime minister, um, a, a new Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, uh, and he came here to the US on his first visit a couple of months ago. Um, in fact, he came to Silicon Valley, actually, which, which was interesting. Um, you know, he met with a lot of the, the technology companies and he, he made the point that that Ireland is not a country at the edge of Europe. We're, we're a country at the center of the world, which I think was an interesting phrase. And I think it's, it's correct. So what we're seeing in the tech sector is that um, there's a lot of competition in Europe. There's a lot of competition here. There's increasing pressure by VCs on funding and companies need to show traction. So international and Going international and getting international revenue is a must, and young companies need to be global from day one. Uh, but as you said, you know Europe is a, a great market. There's 500 million tech savvy. You know, mature, there's a mature market there, but it's also very complex. So you've got you know 
28 different countries in the EU alone. You've got different nationalities, different cultures to, to navigate. And then you also have, you know, you have Brexit um, looking looking more likely. Um, so that puts a lot of, of uncertainty there and, and a lot of challenges. Um, there's, there's increasing regulation and, and changes happening on that front. So what Ireland really does and has been doing for you know for 40 years here in Silicon Valley is um, we've been kind of helping companies to de-risk that process uh, of internationalization. I remember many years ago, and I might have mentioned this to you the last time we, we talked, I called, I believe it was IBM, and I got this guy with a very thick Irish accent, and we started talking, and I assumed he was probably somewhere around Boston, but it turned out he was in Dublin. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hearing actually less of that in terms of the tech support side, but how important is it that the fact that, you know, there are plenty of people in Ireland who obviously speak very good English, are well-educated, uh, are tech-savvy, how important is that to American companies that, that Irish are not quite as foreign as, uh, as, as you might think, largely because of the, the cultural bonds and the language bonds? Yeah, I, I think it's, um, I mean, there's obviously natural advantages there. We're, we're English speaking. There's a common kind of work ethic and a common history in terms of between Ireland and the US. But I think if you're if you're looking at a European base, you want a European workforce, you want a European market. So what Ireland offers is, is obviously, yeah, we, we, we've got a lot of sharp people. Uh, we're very, you know, we, we've got free education. So so we have, we, we produce a lot of a lot of tech savvy and sharp and sharp kids. But um, we also have access to to talent from all around Europe and all around the world. So it would be very common for a lot of the companies that have operations in Ireland um, to, to have you know, 40, 50 different nationalities on one site. I think that's important if you're accessing global markets to have access to, to global talent. So we've made that you know, our policy around around mobility and immigration has been very much to be open. Um, part, you know, being part of the EU provides us with that border free access to that talent. But we've also made it easier for people, for companies to take people from the US or from China or from other parts of the world. Um, but you're right. I think around the around the, the, the makeup of the companies there, we've certainly seen a shift over the decades. You know, the first companies that were setting up operations in Ireland, you know, in, in the tech sector 40, 50 years ago were, were manufacturing. Um, and, and we've seen that evolve over time through services to software um, and increasingly now to, to research and development. Uh, so one of the things I think we've noticed, certainly from our team here in, in Silicon Valley over the last year, has been a, been a big jump in the number of companies that are looking at innovation and R&D and software engineering in particular. So there's about $1.5 billion being spent in Ireland by, you, by international companies on R&D every year. Um, so last year, for example, we would have worked with, you know, the likes of Stripe opened up its first engineering center outside of the US in Ireland, Qualcomm, Veritas, um, Microsoft, LinkedIn, and those guys all have engineering teams. There are companies like Jaguar working on autonomous vehicles. There's AI and robotics happening there. So so it's an exciting time from, from that perspective. And obviously the talent plays into that a huge amount How as well. How important is the communication through evolution, the fact that I mean, I remember a time when to make a call, I don't know what it was from Ireland, but to call from the U.S. to London was at $10 a minute. I mean, it yeah. was prohibitively expensive to have a long chat with somebody across yes. the pond. And now we can have free video conferences. We, we can be on the same virtual private networks. Mm. Um, you, you and I could be sitting at our respective desks in the same company, you in Dublin, me in America, and we would essentially, except for our physical lack of proximity, we would be completely linked and networked. How, how important is that to, to the growth that we've seen? Yeah, like I, I think it, it certainly makes life a, a lot easier for, for virtual teams to collaborate. And, and even if you take it one step further, the likes of Slack and those collaboration platforms, um, you know, where, where people are, are, are kind of, you know, collaborating in, in real time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, that, you know, that technology enables, you know, it makes the world smaller. Um, but I think it also, from, for, from a company's perspective, it also, uh, it also makes it more important to have the right people engaging. And, and, and uh, from that perspective, I think when we look at the, at the European landscape, uh, you know, the ability to, to also have lots and lots of people kind of in the one place who can collaborate on different teams um, is important. Now, having traveled on the west coast of Ireland, places like uh, Dingle and, uh, and other places, um, I came to really appreciate the cultural diversity within the country and, and the enormous um, sense of, of pride and, and uh, of the Irish culture. Do you worry at all about in this international environment that Ireland is going to become 
less Ireland. I mean, already people tend to dress alike and yeah. you know think alike in some ways. But how does I- how does Ireland become part of the world community at the same time remain uniquely Irish? Yeah. It's an it's an interesting one. Like I certainly, you know, it's a different country than the one I grew up with in, you know, in the in the eighties and nineties, in terms of, you know, purely our, you know, you know, even from a from a diversity perspective. I mean, modern Ireland, um, is very much a it's it's a multicultural society. It's a very diverse society. Um, if you look at the, you know, if, if you're in Dublin or even you know even even other cities outside of of Dublin, uh, my hometown of Waterford and Galway and Limerick, you'll see people from all over the world. Um, and, and even if you look at, I think, the, you know, our current prime minister, who is, uh, who, who is uh, you know, he's young, he's, he's 36, he's, he's, he's tech savvy, he's also, he's, he's uh, openly gay, um, and he's also a son of, of, um, of immigrants. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that's, that's a reflection of, of the diversity there is in Ireland. We, we see that as well in, in terms of tech, in technology, in the tech sector. Um, obviously, the women in technology being a huge focus um, so and, and we would see that you know some of the leadership of some of the Irish tech companies, for example, uh, are women. So we, you know we're very much aware of uh, of kind of the, the the need for to have a diverse workforce as well. But I think the the Irish the core traits of of the Irish in terms of uh, of education, in terms of of, of communication, being open um, and being hard working. Um, also kind of have, have remained consistent over the decades. And it's been probably one of the reasons why I think the, the Irish and, and American business relationship has remained so strong because there are those simil- similarities. There's a the track record of collaboration across decades. And, and so we're almost out of time. What would you consider the most important takeaway that you would want Americans to understand about Ireland and the relationship, the business mm-hmm. relationship, especially between Ireland and the United States? Yeah, I guess the, the the main point is is look. I think that there is you know there's more to Ireland obviously than you know than the than the green beer as as we know, um, and for over a hundred years we've enjoyed a really really strong business relationship, um, and in the face I think of, of global uncertainty, um, you know Ireland remains a very a very great a great place to do business for U.S. companies. It's been a bridge to, to between Europe and the U.S. for a hundred years, um, and in terms of in terms of being pro business, stable, and and uh, and, and business friendly, um, I think there that's the, the kind of a that's where we see we see Ireland um, kind of remaining going forward. So I have one last question: Why does Guinness taste better in Ireland than it does here? I can't answer that question, uh, Larry. I think I think if I could answer that question, we would, you know, th- that's that's uh, that's a hundred dollar question, put it that way. But it, it certainly doesn't taste the same as it uh, as it does at home. Pora Cave of IDA Ireland. Thank you and happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks, Larry. Cheers.